Speaker Johnson's first big legislative move is a bill for standalone aid to Israel, keeping aid to Ukraine separate since, you know, MAGA loves Russia and paying for it with IRS spending cuts. And I think if you put this to the American people and they weigh the two needs, I think they're going to say standing with Israel and protecting the innocent uh, over there is in our national interest and is a more immediate need than IRS agents. How very Republican to look out for the billionaire tax cheats. I feel like there was a line in the Bible, which Mike Johnson says summarizes his worldview, about rich men being about as likely to enter the kingdom of heaven as being able to fit through the eye of a needle. But, you know, details. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has called Johnson's proposal not serious and says Israel and Ukraine should not be separated. And uh, in a sign that <laughs> the H-E double hockey sticks is frozen over, Mitch McConnell agrees with Schumer. And shock of all shocks, cutting funds to the IRS is actually more expensive. The Congressional Budget Office estimates Speaker Johnson's plan would add nearly $27 billion to the deficit by 2033, although Johnson didn't seem too concerned about that. Not surprised at all. Only in Washington when you cut spending do they call it a, Are you alarmed an increase the in the CEO's deficit. Support? So much for the supposed party of fiscal responsibility. Meanwhile, the White House has already threatened to veto Mike Johnson's Israel bill. In a statement, the Biden administration said, denying humanitarian assistance to 2 million Palestinian civilians, the majority of them women and children, would be a grave mistake, adding, it inserts partisanship into support for Israel, making our ally a pawn in our politics at a moment when we must stand together. Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California and Maura Gillespie, political strategist and former aide to Speaker John Boehner and to Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Congressman, thank you both for being here. Let me start with you, Congressman. Well, where, in your view, are these uh, censure votes going? Well, uh, Joy, look, uh, it's, it's pretty rich that Republicans would seek to censure anyone on our side when Jim Jordan, who was one of their candidates for speaker, had tweeted out not too long ago just Kanye, period, Elon, period, Trump, period. And then, like, a day later, Kanye said we should kill every Jew, essentially. And then Jim Jordan kept that tweet up for about three months. So uh, let's, you know, think twice before we get in a back and forth uh, censuring game about, you know, what their own members have to say. Like, the American people for the last three weeks watched the absolute chaos that the Republicans brought at the expense of getting things done on inflation, on health care, on keeping the government open, on funding the needs of the Middle East and Ukraine so that they could pick a new speaker. And we get right back to Congress, and this is the first thing they want to do. They're not serious about governing. Again, we're going to show we are serious about governing. And if they want anyone in this building who's going to help them get things done, as we have in the past, we stand ready. And uh, I know you have to vote, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do that. Do you want to go and, and vote and come back? I'm good. But do, no, I'm good. Uh, I'm, you good? I'm fired okay. up. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, you're fired up. So. Okay, so what, <laughs> and a follow-up question on that. I mean, Republicans obviously don't care about optics, but attempting to censure the lone Palestinian uh, American in the Congress doesn't seem uh, like something any Democrats would get on board with, even though there are some Democrats who've been critical of Representative Tlaib's position. Are, is there a chance Democrats would vote for a censure resolution against one of their own members? I don't think many will. And again, what I see this as is, is that Republicans recognize that their nominee is going to be Donald Trump. And one of the biggest concerns Americans are going to have about Donald Trump is that the guy kind of ran a coup on the Capitol because he lost an election and it was violent and police officers were hurt and we, you know, very nearly were not able to carry out the certification. And so they must essentially erase that or at least create like a false equivalency. And so they're going to go after our colleagues and say, oh, what a Democratic colleague of mine did was essentially the same thing that Donald Trump did. And so tie goes to the runner, make Donald Trump the nominee. So we're not going to let them do that. Uh, and, and we're going to make sure that every single day the American people know they're more comfortable with violence than voting. And when it comes to policy, we have principles. They're absolutely bankrupt. And again, I think mainstream will always beat MAGA if that's a choice. Uh, Maura, let me go to you on this, because you did work for two normies, I guess we have to call it. it. At this point, there's literally two different kinds of Republicans, uh, and your, your, your wing is super small. I don't know if you realize how small it is. I mean, what does it say about the party that their priorities now are not funding the government? I mean, we are inside of 30 days now before the government shuts down, not figuring out what we want to do in terms of foreign policy and funding uh, allies. 
but making every single Republican adhere to the big lie. It's all they seem to care about. Ken Buck now has to go. He's a far right wing Republican. He's not good enough. That's what's so jarring, I think, is, is to see someone who's really, really conservative drop out because of a stance that he took against Jim Jordan, who he didn't believe was fit to serve as Speaker of the House, and now he can't stay in Congress. I mean, it, it's telling of where we are in our party, but also our politics and how we're... And I hope some of these members who are who endured some of that hate and vitriol and, and really just the MAGA uh, mob, maybe they have a little sympathy now for their fellow colleagues, their former colleagues, uh, Adam Kensinger and Liz Cheney, because they endured yeah. that for the better part of two years. Yeah. And it shouldn't be this way. We, we now view each other as political enemies, even within our same, same party. Inside the party, That's right. a real problem. And it says something about our society that we have just gone too far. What do you make of the fact that you still have Tommy Tuberville on the Senate side continuing to block promotions inside of our military at a time when we're watching a war go on far away? The Marine Corps doesn't have a leader. Uh, the person who should have been the commandant, uh, right. at least a senior person, had a medical issue, mm -hmm. and this is being blamed on Tuberville. He is now saying that Republicans should hold off on aid to Israel until the U.S.-Mexico border is addressed. What does that even mean? Republicans don't even have a bill for the border, but now he's added on top of ban abortion on all military and don't let anybody in the military have an abortion also do the border or he's not going to yield. What do you make of that? There's nothing more infuriating, one, than someone who should not be in Congress, who doesn't know what, what being a senator is, then decide to hold up the job of being a senator. I mean, it's beyond frustrating. And again, the Republican Party that I belong to, we're for our military. We're for our veterans. We support business. We support a strong foreign policy. We support a economic, you know, fiscal conservatism. That's where we're at as a, as a party, where we're supposed to be at. Um, but what Tuberville is doing is just showing his lack of experience uh, on full display. And he's just being an obstructionist just for the sake of being a, an obstructionist. Yeah. Um, ha having a, a you know, nationwide abortion ban and having this say over what the military men and women who are fighting to defend and, say, and protect us. Yeah, which and he's then, never done. Which he has not done. So how do you get to stand there and block all of these promotions and things that we need for a stronger military? Yeah, Congressman Swall, let's go back to this issue of the funding, um, which Republicans do want to separate. They want to try to cleave off Ukraine because obviously, you know, they love Putin. Um, but this is how Mitch McConnell, I want to play for you real quick, I hope you can hear it, how Mitch McConnell tried to frame the argument on to, as to why Ukraine funding should be, should, should, should happen. Take a listen. It requires a worldwide approach rather than trying to take parts of it out. It's all connected. The Chinese and the Russians said they're now friends forever. Iranian mm -hmm. drones are being used in Ukraine and against the Israelis. Let's talk about where the money's really going. A significant portion of it's being spent in the United States in 38 different states, replacing the weapons that we sent to Ukraine with more modern weapons. So we're rebuilding our industrial base. I mean, Congressman, I'm not sure that uh, saying let's fund the military industrial complex is the flex Mitch McConnell thinks it is. But what do you make of that argument, which apparently is also what the White House's strategy is to say, no, fund Ukraine because it's good for the U.S. economy. Yeah, fund Ukraine because it's good for our economy. It's good for our security and it's good for our leadership in the world. But you know what? Republicans, for the longest time, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that they would talk tough on China. But now I see that they're soft on Russia. And so if, if you're going to talk tough on China, you have to stand up against Russia for what they're doing in Ukraine. And you have to be able to draw the straight line between Iran, who funded so many of the drone attacks that happened in Kyiv, and also funded the attacks that happened in southern Israel to help Hamas. And so if you don't understand that there is a through line here and that our security is at stake, our allies' security is at stake. And by the way, what the Republicans are doing by pulling out the Israel aid and also saying we're going to fund Israel, but the way we're going to do it is we're going to add $12 billion to the deficit, and we're going to allow the richest people in America to skate on their taxes to do it. They're missing an opportunity. It's absurd. They're missing an opportunity to have a bipartisan vote to address all of our needs, as well as the humanitarian needs of innocent Palestinians in the area who need leadership and collaboration on this issue.